So, a uh, new Playmaker tutorial is very simple, it's very straightforward, even though if you do get some difficulty uh, doing it, don't, don't, don't get disturbed by it, uh, just ask for help uh, if you have any issues. First of all, I want to apologize for the background noise that you might experience, there's some construction and renovation going on in the neighborhood. So, this kind of waypoint I would normally recommend for uh, enemy patrols, guarding and stuff like that. Uh, you could use it for tower defense, but there would be some issues later on, uh, such as multiple units and uh, deleting deletion of units, which is why I'm recommending it mostly for patrolling. I will be showing uh, nav mesh in a new tutorial, uh, and I will continue to make some follow-ups on the waypoint actually. And when I feel like it, I'll go back to the other tutorial uh, where I talk about the turret and uh, stuff like that. Anyway, uh, this is what we're doing, and um, I'll only show half of it because I want you to figure out how to make it go back, which should be hopefully uh, very clear and easy to figure out. If not, leave a comment and I'll tell you. Otherwise, what's happening here is I'm the first thing I'm doing here, I'm making uh, my first state in Playmaker. Uh, I'm making sure I'm picking the prefab called enemy, which is just the ball. I'm also picking a spawn point which is already these are the spawn points so basically what I'm saying is create enemy which is a ball spawn on weapon one which is this one right here and I'm saying store this object in an enemy game object so it will store something in the value here but it's currently empty because I want to store it when I actually spawn it you can see it up here as well in the inspector so once it's spawned it says I twin move to is what I'm using that's why I'm saying it's uh, mostly meant for some simple stuff uh, I'm saying I'm specifying game object uh, I'm specifying the enemy the game object so once I've spawned it I'm using the variable and not physically I'm not physically dragging the the prefab over and I'm saying move to a new position transform position 02 which is this one and I'm using a speed variable to control the speed and I've set it to 5 uh, I've turned off the time I just kept kept everything else normal and when the event is finished I'm saying you have reached waypoint 2 which is the transition event I'm going to waypoint 3 and I've turned off real time and stop on exit and it just repeats like this and that's all there is to it so to make sure it's very clear uh, what we'll do is we're gonna keep the waypoints for now but we're gonna turn off this one I'm, I'm gonna show you uh, how to do it before I make any changes to show you what happens if you don't do it this specific way and hopefully it will be clear so I have an enemy prefab we'll keep it but what we do we'll make a new one called sphere and we will call it enemy 2 right and we'll uh, put it right here so it's already there just for now, we might delete it, we, we might not delete it, we'll see. So I'm uh, control clicking and left clicking for a quick uh, event and FSM creation. I'm going to rename it to waypoint path movement, something like that. And I want to create an object, do I want to create an object? I already have an object in the game, if you're not spawning it as you play. So I'm guessing we could... Um, just keep this one over there and in that case let's try I twin move two so I'm just gonna use the owner I'm not gonna bother uh, first waypoint now it's already in the game so we don't really need waypoint one it's already there in the game you start the game it's already spawning so I twin move to I'm using the owner because the code is on this one 
and I want to move to transform position and let's drag and drop 3.2 let's click play yep that's fine so technically uh, if I just go finish and finish And I'll replace first waypoint 2 with waypoint 3, and waypoint 3 with waypoint 4, and waypoint 4 with waypoint 5. And if I then click play, what happens? Now, if you did notice this middle part right here you will notice that it suddenly moves a bit more faster right now you might not want that okay and the reason you might not want that is because um, if it's walking it would be suddenly weird if it started running out of the blue so that's because it has a timer because it's the time is on default so what happens if I use 2 here, 0.5 here, 0.5 here, and 0.5 here. It's basically the time it will take to get to one place and another. Which, if you want it like that, is perfectly fine. There's no problem with that at all. But if you want to use a variable to keep it under control and your speed and acceleration because you might want to do that later on, especially if you have a car, we want to make a variable called, uh, we could go for int. Sometimes if you are not sure what you want to do, just to point it out, you could on the latest version just click new variable called speed and it should uh, make the proper type um, depending on what you're doing you normally want to keep float because that float is as I said before is with decimal which is kind of a safe way of doing it when using uh, this kind of movement I click on inspector so you get it in the inspector and basically just pick speed on all and regardless of the distance of each waypoint, it's going to have that same speed now. Okay. You see, it takes the same time to reach the next waypoint because it has this fixed speed. Um, so that's the simple version. That's, that's the easiest you can do. Now, if you want to make sure that you save resources and you spawn guards according to the player distance and so on you obviously want to drag this one on as a prefab and you want to delete it and now if you click play nothing happens because you have to spawn the uh, enemy as well You want me noting one uh, key difference is I'm putting the waypoint on the enemy this time around rather than having a separate code. It really depends on what you're doing. There are pros and cons, which we'll figure out as we go. Uh, I want to make this the start state, and I'll put this as finish for now. And here we go. Spawn. enemy for that we need to have a create an object and we want to drag the prefab and we want to make sure this time around we want to use the waypoint we want to drag it over sorry which isn't working what did I do? Right, because it's on the... Right, 
that's all what, what I was gonna show. So what's happening now is um creating a game object on top of the game object that's not in the scene, right? And I'm trying to specify a spawn point. Let's click. Now, as you see, it's not creating the object because we haven't specified the spawn point. But let's try one thing else. Uh, test spawn point. I'm purposely uh, showing you the mistakes uh, rather than just the answers because I want you to understand the pros and cons a little bit on the simplest matters anyway because they are easy to follow. So for this spawn point, let's try again. Am I allowed to drag it in? No, didn't work. And that's the same as this one, so it's, it's not gonna work. So is there anything else we can do? There might be. So let's try an empty game object and call it spawn point, see if he wants to cooperate. And for the spawn point, uh, for on the enemy, let's try waypoint one. Does it allow that? No. Nope. Let's copy paste this one. Uh, sorry, there's many ways of doing things. I'm just testing right now actually because uh, just to show you that there's a reason I have a empty game object with all those codes because it's just much easier to have a different system for each thing rather than putting it on the object you think is going to be doing the movement but as you do new uh, new units or see if you're going to make a tower defense game you're going to screw up in either way because of the way we're doing the waypoints but I'll show that as well. So I want to try and find a game object, so I'm going to call the waypoint01, which is this one. I want to tag it as specifically waypoint01. I want to go back to the enemy and I want to pick waypoint01 and I want to store it in the spawn point and then I want to pick it in the spawn point. Now you'll see that nothing pops up unless I do this, which is gonna crash the game. So what happened? Well, just for the fun of it, because this one isn't physically out right because it's not physically out the code within this isn't running so trying to spawn something from something that doesn't already exist in the game doesn't work so i'm putting it out and just see what happens it's going crazy just look at all this it's gonna crash if i don't stop it so obviously that doesn't work so let's uh well, not, let's not delete it anytime soon because we might have some more fun with it later. Well, let's try the way I did it originally. Enemy movement, right? So we wanna create an object, and the object we wanna spawn is this one. Actually, it's not. We wanna do this one because we don't want the code from the the one we just did uh, the spawn point we want it to be waypoint one and as you see now I can drag it without problem because this one is an empty game already it's already in the game it's in the scene the the code is running it can track everything is well, everything is good uh, we want to store the object in uh, enemy let's call it G enemy spelling wrong I know don't worry about it not that picky at the moment for that so I'm storing it in there it just pops up here okay I'm a bit picky on it um, spawn enemy 
and then it's basically about getting those waypoints up. Waypoint move moment one, and then like this. Uh, so here we are doing the I twin move two. I twin move two. So we're using what exactly? We're not using this specific owner because this is our system. This is where we're spawning things. So we want to specify the game object, and we want to pick G enemy. So when it's being spawned, it's being stored in the variable, and it knows what we're talking about. When it was copy paste. this so transform position where what is it um, the number two For this we're going we want it to move to this one here oh, we want it to move on number four I think it doesn't matter if it's not 100% accurate like this like this well, let's just check. So it's stopping now. And that's because we need to specify which event it wants to activate when it's done. Let's just do that for this one as well. Let's try again. Stopping on exit. I kind of told you what happened. Is it because of this? Yeah. So as I said earlier, stop on exit means when you're exiting the event, stop. You, for several reasons, you might want that, but we want it to be off because we want it to continue. And it should. As you see, it's moving fast. So we need the speed variable. Speed. Take it five. Let's turn time off. Add speed. Turn time off. Add speed. Turn time off. Speed. Turn time off. And speed. There we go. And now you just have to make sure it goes back. And I'm sure you can figure that out on your own. Now one of the reason you don't want to use this for such kind of tower defense-ish because it's not really set up for it. Because what happens is when you're gonna spawn the enemy. And they were gonna start moving. Each time you spawn an enemy, they're gonna delete the previous one. And start over again um, so you have to do a different uh, logical approach if you wanted to do that uh, anyway that's it for now I hope you enjoyed it uh, look up look out for my new next tutorial which is going to be nav mesh in playmaker and then I do intend to make um, attempt to make one that spawns the, the unit over and over again thank you bye